I've been working on this voxel project for a while now, but there's two things that have always been annoying me about it. First, the world generation always felt pretty flat and boring, and the lighting was way too simplistic. So today I'll show you how I improve both of those things to create a super interesting voxel world with good lighting. But first, I have to fix the destruction because right now it is, uh, oof. The main difficulty with destruction comes from the fact that I only place voxels on the surface of the world and leave everything under empty and I generate as the destruction happens. That makes world generation a lot faster, but when I destroy, I have to somehow tell the code where to place the voxels. Otherwise, it's just gonna fill a whole sphere. I came up with a system of placing air above the terrain when generating it, and then when I fill a hole after destruction, I place it only under the air. It was really hard to code, especially since I had to somehow consider things like structures on top of the terrain, and multiple layers of destruction if you destroy above or under a spot that you previously destroyed. But I managed to do it. The basic idea is that all surfaces will have air placed above or under it, depending on which way it's facing. Then, after destroying, I trace a sphere with the destruction radius, and for each voxel in that sphere, I count how much air is above it. If the amount is odd, then it is in the void and should be filled, otherwise it's gonna leave a hole in the map. And if the amount of air above is even, then it is in the air and should not be filled. It's kinda weird when you say it like that, but it does work. However, it was pretty tough placing the air, especially after a destruction that I had to refill the air in the hole that I placed. Once that was done, I made the destruction destroy the smaller voxels too, and fill the ground with stone once you go deep enough, and there you go, you can now fight with the big boss that destroys the world like before, but now with a Ray Tracer! Okay, the collisions might be a bit weird, but let's not talk about that. I then decided to experiment with my ray tracer to try to make a sort of fake higher resolution where I would split voxels into smaller parts to make them look higher resolution than they were. It kinda worked, but there were problems with the shadows and corners, and it was pretty laggy too, so I disabled it for now. I think it will be worth revisiting one day though. Now let's get into the juice of this video, the world generation. The way my world generation works right now is a simple 2D Perlin noise, which means that I send it a X and Z value, and it gives me a Y value, and I place the voxel there. It works, but it's boring. An easy way to make a world more interesting is to use another Perlin noise to decide the scale of the terrain, meaning that some areas will be more flat and some others will be more crazy. Just doing this already makes the world a lot better in my opinion. But there are still no caves or overhangs or anything 3D. There is still only one voxel per each position, so there is never two voxels above each other. To get this, we have to use 3D Perlin noise. The basic code to use it was pretty simple and I got it working to have a 3D world, but the world made no sense at all. There are a lot of values to tweak to get it to make more sense, and even more to get it to look decent. You can change the scales, the thresholds, the spread, and a bunch of other parameters. Some settings might give you few big caves, while other gives you a lot of small caves and bumpy ground. Adjusting all of this to get a good looking map was hard, but I believe I found some pretty good values and I got it looking good. It's still kinda crazy, but since I want to make maybe something about aliens, I'm thinking a crazy landscape might be more interesting. Mom, I want Minecraft. We have Minecraft at home. Minecraft at home? Guys, please stop saying it looks like Minecraft, I swear, it's different. <laughs> then I had to remake my air system I talked about earlier for the destruction to work with this new world gen because before it only placed air on the surface, but now it has to place air in the caves and everything too. After doing that, I got my destruction to work great. I can destroy tunnels into caves and everything. Amazing. The last thing I wanted to do was to improve the lighting. If I tried a simple technique based on depth to do it, it was pretty bad. 
so instead I decided to recode the whole lighting system. Currently, every time the ray tracer hits a voxel, it casts a ray from the point hit towards the sun to check if anything is in the way. That's alright, but it gives a shadow or not shadow value, so there is no gradient or soft shadows. I could have tried to shoot many rays to do the soft shadows, but that would have lagged a lot. An easier way to do it was to shoot rays from the sun and save in the voxels if they were hit or not and then spread it. So I started just by checking the voxels hit by the sun and it worked pretty well. I could even make it so when a voxel changed from in shadow to not in shadow or the other way around there was a fade effect. That was decent but the goal was to get the light to spread a little bit and be softer. So I started working on that. It was actually really hard to do without too much lag, but I think I managed to do a decent job. The light now spreads from the voxel hit by the sun to its neighbors. That's pretty good, but you can clearly see the light is done per voxel and that doesn't look very good. So using my ray tracer, I can check the light levels of the neighbors of each voxel and interpolate between them to create a smoother shadow. If I try that, I get a much smoother result. It's not perfectly smooth, but I think the imperfect lighting actually gives the world a bit more texture and makes it more interesting than the flat colors like before, so I might actually keep it that way. Wow! Finally, now that the light is calculated from the sun, I have to set a range for it. The bigger the range, the more the FPS will drop, so I decided to set a small range and make it move with the camera. By keeping the fading effect from earlier, it makes the edges of the light when moving fade in or out, which looks pretty good. So now I can turn back on the UI, move around in an epic world with good lighting, and fight a mutant pig that destroys the world by shooting fireballs at it. Okay sure, I guess the light in the whole world flashes every time there's a destruction, but let's not focus on the details, okay? Now, okay, seriously, after fixing that, everything looked pretty good in my opinion. It's actually kind of fun to jump around the world and shoot at the pig and try to dodge its attacks. I might need to adjust some things like the scale, but I think it's pretty good anyway. I can still shoot meteorites at it, by the way, and go bam bam and destroy that pig. Hell yeah. But the gameplay gets boring pretty fast. <laughs> I'm thinking of maybe making a game where you defeat waves of enemies, but for now I'm not sure. I'll probably try to add more enemies and spells for the players to use, like a spell to build a wall and things like that. And then I'll decide how the gameplay should go. That is the classic way to manage game dev projects, go with the flow. 